Okay, so these problems we're not going to solve. All we're going to do is convert them over into the notation by using an integral symbol. The word definite integral, we have definite and we have indefinite integral. A definite integral means that you have the integral sign with two numbers given on it. Indefinite integral, we're like the ones we did before with antiderivatives. That means that we have the plus c on the end. That one do not have any numbers on the integral sign. So we're talking about definite integrals in this session, so we want to have numbers on it. And in fact, the numbers that you put on the integral are going to come directly from these intervals that are going to be given. So all they want you to do on this problem is convert this over using the new notation with definite integrals and, and integral symbols. So all this right here is basically what we just talked about before. We talked about calculating the area using the limit process, but we're trying to get away from this notation because it can be cumbersome, trying to get over into working with antiderivatives. So all I want to do is convert this. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to use the integral symbol. It's basically going to take the place of a limit and a summation sign. And you're going to use 0 and 4. The A is always your first number that goes down below, and your B is going to go on top. Now, this right here is going to be turned into your f of x. Now, we, when we talked about before, normally you would put a C, ci in for x. Well, this time we're going to remove the ci and put an x back in. So any place where we see ci, we're going to turn that back into an x. 6x, and then we do 4 minus x squared. And then delta x, there's a little 1 down below. You may or may not see that depending on what book that you're using. Delta x is the same thing as dx. So this whole thing right here means exactly this. You're still calculating areas under a curve, but instead of doing it with limits, we're now going to be moving on and doing it with antiderivatives that we talked about before in the previous section. Let's do this one, convert that one over. Okay, so again we got integral symbol there. Takes care of the limit and the summation notation. A, the, the first number in the interval is always A. That goes in the bottom, the B goes on top. We want our F of X, which is this inside the parentheses. We're just going to put an X in and place the CI. That's 3 over X squared. And then all that's going to be multiplied by DX. Because again, your delta X is always the same thing as your DX. And that's it. This is the, we don't have to solve these. All they want you to do is get some practice converting them from the old notation over into the new notation. And for the remainder of this course, we're mainly going to be working with this integral notation. And if you take the second semester calculus, you're going to be working mainly with that one as well.